Hey, what up, y'all? It's your man, Tyrese. Um, I want to talk to y'all real quick about this, this idea. I just called to say I love you. I leave these videos because I love you. So listen. I want to talk about this urge and this aggressive feeling to get money. And I want to tell y'all what my view is on the other side of being a millionaire. Listen, before your egos get all in what I'm saying, this is going to go somewhere. When I grew up in Watts, South Central LA, there is no one that I know of that was more broke and fucked up than me, period. Um, the struggle was so real for me, me and my mom and father, step pops and brothers and sisters, we was pretty much on every form of county public assistance, food stamps, social security checks, county checks, you name it. If there was any type of free money we can get, we got it. We got WIC vouchers for the kicks and the milk, everything you could think of, we got it. There's a lot of people that live in the hood that still got it good. We all know it, working mom and pop, so not everybody that lives in the hood got it bad. There's a point I'm making. When you're broke, when you're living at the bottom, so to speak, I realize that being poor, this is now me on the other side of being a millionaire and being successful, I realize that being poor is more of a mental mind state over what it is, over what it is as far as your bank account. When you're a poor person, mentally, your bank account will reflect that. But if your spirit and your mind and your visions and your ideas and your ambition is rich and wealthy and successful, you can be successful in your mind long before it reflects in your bank account. I'll say it again. You can be successful, wealthy, um, number one, you can be living the best of life long before it ever reflects in your bank account. That's when you'll notice that as soon as you change your mind, it's going to change your surroundings, change your life. If you find yourself being a negative and a piss poor person mentally and spiritually, if you find yourself being depressed and uninspired and unmotivated, if you're uninspired yourself, how can, how can anybody get inspired to want to fuck with you? How is it even possible? How can you expect someone to believe in you when you don't believe in yourself? Now, some people do, but they have the foresight because I, I felt this way before and I feel like God has blessed me with this. I feel like I have the foresight to be able to see the value in people beyond what they have in their bank accounts. If you look at, if you were to go on YouTube right now and you look up the making of open invitation, just run to YouTube right now after this video and look up the making of open invitation by Tyrese. You'll see that I have a bunch of people living in my house, all talented singers, producers, and musicians. And technically, they couldn't afford to be in my house because they didn't have any money. But beyond the money that they had in their bank account, I was able to say, you're gifted, you're talented, you're passionate. You want to be successful in music. You want to be successful as a songwriter. You want to be successful and have a presence with your gifts and your singing and everything you're capable of doing. And because you don't have a resume, because you don't have any money, because you don't have fly cars in my driveway and a bunch of jewelry and, and stuff around your neck, doesn't mean that I don't see the value in who you are and what you're bringing to this project. My first number one album, my first number one single for 11 weeks, I'll tell you all the rest of my resume later. So the point is, I am specifically one of those type of people that is able to see the value in people beyond their bank account. But these people that were in my house believed in themselves. They felt like they had what it takes. They had so much confidence 
and integrity behind their actual gifts. They were just looking for something or somebody to give them a shot. And that are all winning. They're all working on the most significant and biggest projects out there with everybody in the industry. Because I believed in them. God sent them to me. And I ended up embracing them from where they were in their lives and careers and they rocked out. Let me get back to my original point. You cannot buy what's not for sale. I have a relationship with my daughter that has shown me that if I'm able to buy and purchase and arrange the greatest things that any six-year-old little girl could ever imagine beyond her dreams, she will grow up and she will say to any man, my daddy raised me right. My daddy made me earn and work for any and everything he ever did for me. Other things he did because he just felt like doing them. But for the most part, no man could ever pull up in a nice car. No man could ever buy, purchase, or arrange anything that my daddy has already done for me. And me start thinking and believing that because you're driving that nice car or because you're worth this amount of money in your bank account, because you own a private plane or because your car's got leather seats in them with wheels and you got jewelry on, that does not make you a good person. See, a lot of times women specifically can find themselves saying he's a good man because he has a good job. He's a good man because of the car that he's driving. He's a good man because of all of the things that he bought me and purchased for me. And when you understand money and you understand that some people who have money were assholes before they got money and after they got money they became assholes that just so happened to have money. It's like being an amplified asshole. You have a greater opportunity to be an asshole because you have more money. To be mean and evil and condescending towards other people who may not have as much as you. You cannot buy what's not for sale. My daughter is not for sale. My daughter can't be purchased. So therefore, as she gets older, she's going to say, I grew up in a life and living a lifestyle that I understand was not normal. But it was normal for her. My daughter's song would say, started from the top, still here. Started from the top, still here. But understand that the only thing, the only value that I see in raising our child this way is that I'm a great father. I am fully committed to fatherhood. My busy and my career cannot and will not be used as a weapon against me. I am a provider. But I am not just a check. I am not just a bank account. I am not just semen. I am a father. And a lot of fathers feel this way. You cannot buy what's not for sale. If you know your value and you know what you're bringing to the table, no one can purchase you. If you don't like that person, it doesn't matter how much money they have, how big their house is, you make me uncomfortable and I don't want to be here no more. So therefore, you are a man or a woman of integrity. They can't have anything or anybody to swoop you off of your feet just because they have the things that they have. Now, I have very little respect for a woman who can just meet a man in one week and allow that man to give her a credit card and just say, oh, baby, I love you, you know what I'm saying? I know I just met you, but look, go to the store, go to the mall, go buy you some red bottoms, take my Black American Express, go crazy. Uh, I just don't respect a man who moves like that because I look at that man as he's moving out of insecure impulses. What does that mean? That means that I ain't shit. I know I ain't shit as a man. 
but I do have money and I do have materialistic things. So in order for you to not realize that I ain't shit, I have to swoop you off of your feet, wine and dine you, and buy you everything I could possibly buy you to swoop you off your feet because I don't want you to realize that I'm not shit. So if I create the smoke and buy all of this stuff for you, you'll get so caught up in the smoke, ah, you won't realize that you're in a relationship with a man that ain't shit. See, my daughter is going to grow up and she's going to say that I need to be in a relationship with a man that reminds me of my father. My father worked his ass off every day. He barely slept at night because he never wanted me to be without. But more importantly, my man was a man, my father was a man with wisdom, knowledge, and insight and information. He was a man of integrity. He was a man who loved God. He was a man that believed that if you want it, you gotta go get it. And you can't sit back and get lazy with your relationship with God and continue praying all day, every day, and not doing the work. And even though I miss my dad, sometimes he'd be gone for a couple of weeks and sometimes he'll be gone for a couple months. But even when he was away, my dad made me understand that he was away and everything that he was doing was for the greater cause of me, Shayla Gibson. And as she gets older, I have created the blueprint. I have created the standard for the type of man that she will be attracted to. If you don't remind me of the kind of qualities that my father has, I want nothing to do with you. My daddy didn't try and buy me. My daddy loved me and showed me what love is. And we just so happened to drive that car. We just so happened to live in that house. But it doesn't make him a great man because he drives that car. There's a great man sitting inside of that car. I know a lot of you women out there and men can relate to what I'm saying. We put a whole lot of emphasis on money. But when you get money, you'll realize that money is just about the conveniences of life. Money is about the conveniences. If I get a flat tire, I can order a flatbed. If I'm about to run out of gas, I can go get gas. If I feel hungry, I can not only just eat, I can eat what I want, when I want, where I want, and with who I want. That's what money is. If I, if I see something that I love, if I want to buy it or arrange it, it can be done and arranged. And I don't have to think about what it costs, even though I do anyway because I'm cheap as hell. That's what money is. They always say more money, more problems. I don't have no problems. And I'll tell you why. Because I've gotten rid of all things, people, and situations that have brought problems in my life. There is no such thing as having more money and having more problems. There are no problems. There are no problems. I refuse to be on the receiving end of whatever you decide to dump on me. So I've gotten rid of all things, people, friends, family, any and everything that made no sense for my life, I've gotten rid of it. So I wake up and I go to sleep every single night in a state of peace. There are a few personal matters that I'm dealing with, but I've let go and I let God. God has a job to do. You're up stressing and you're, you're driving yourself crazy because there's a warfare going on in your mind. Because you're, you, have, you have not... God has a job to do. You, you waking up every day stressing yourself out, driving yourself crazy because you're trying to do God's job. You cannot buy what's not for sale. I really hope that nobody's ego allows them to think that all I'm doing is leaving a video flossing, flashing. I'm trying to make y'all understand the other side. When you're broke, and you're living at the bottom and you're struggling and you're barely holding on financially, in your mind you would say, as soon as I make money, all of my problems are gonna go away. Well, I'm here to tell you, I've now lived on both sides. 
If I had problems, it would be because I choose to have problematic, malicious, horrible, negative people in my life on the other side of having money. So basically, even while you're broke, even while things are not going as fast or moving in such a positive, it's like, man, I'm still barely holding on financially. Things are still messed up and uncomfortable for me. You could still live a life of peace. You could still wake up every single day and be happy and feel great because God understands that if you appreciate, genuinely appreciate what you have now, he will open up the floodgate for blessings and opportunities to pour down on you even more in a greater and faster amount. Some of y'all are so disrespectful towards where you are right now in the state that you're living in. God will say, you know what? You don't even recognize how blessed you are now. It doesn't matter if you're driving a Honda Accord or if you're on the bus or if you're walking. Are you blessed or do you understand how blessed you are to be able to afford bus fare? Think about it. It could be worse. There are some people that want to get to work. They can't get to work. I remember when I was in Watts, I wanted to go to school every day and couldn't get to school. And all I needed was 25 cents to get on a dash bus. Do you recognize how blessed you are right now? Genuinely thankful and blessed, desiring more. But do you recognize how blessed you are right now? If you make it to the end of this video, I want you to write you cannot buy what's not for sale. Shayla, I love you. I love you with all my heart. You know that? Shayla, I want you to repeat after me, okay? You cannot buy what's not for sale. I love you. Peace, y'all.